Before last weekend, the Robert Morris men's ice hockey team had gotten nine straight games without a win. But both the players and their coach felt they were better than what their 3-12-3 record had indicated. We were close, and uh, I kept saying I like our team and I like uh, where we're at, and we just needed to put it all together. And, and that was the there was a piece always missing in every one of our games, and finally there wasn't a piece missing. And it couldn't have come at a better time, as the Colonials welcomed the nation's top team, Miami of Ohio, to Mellon Arena as part of the Pittsburgh College Hockey Showcase on Friday night. Robert Morris's puzzling season was put back together with a 3-1 to one upset over the Red Hawks on a night to remember at the Igloo. Unbelievable event. I mean, great crowd. We had, uh, and I think after the first period when we scored the shorthanded goal, they started to smell potential upset, and it, it got really loud for close to 4,000 people there. And once we got that first goal, it really um, meant to us that we could skate with this team, and maybe it's our night. Maybe it's our night to win the game. I'll tell you, when we scored the two goals to make it 3-1, to one, it uh, really kind of took us to the next level. And, the only thing I kept looking at was the clock and see you know, there was too much time when we scored the third goal because there was 14 minutes left. We had the vast majority of the crowd and they were all on our side. They were, I think they were standing for the last five minutes of the game. It was, it was absolutely unbelievable. There was hardly any time to celebrate as a rematch with the number one ranked Red Hawks was looming just two days later in Ohio. But the Colonials were up for that challenge as well, defeating Miami 2-1 to one at the Goggin Ice Arena and picking up their first two-game series sweep since February of last year. The biggest thing is that we beat them on Friday and that we knew that we can beat them. That we, uh, the way we played, if we play like that again, we have a good chance of beating them. So I think the whole team was just thinking, you know, if we play the same way that we did on Friday, we have a good chance of sweeping the number one team. We had to weather the storm on, on Sunday, that's for sure. They came out and we knew that they would come out and they came out hard. They outshot us big time in the first period, I think 17 to 3. And it was uh, one-sided, it was tilted. I don't think they had to do, this, do the, uh, the Zamboni, didn't have to do their half of the ice. We knew they were going to come out hard and, uh, on Sunday and we were going to have to weather the storm of it. But we, uh, we were up for the challenge and I'm, I'm, really, I'm re really proud of all the guys. And we scored 11 seconds into the second period and we had a great second period. We outshot them, we outscored them. We outworked them, and then, uh, you know, at the end of the game, we, we killed a lot of penalties and, and uh, did the things we needed to do to be successful in the third period. The one constant in both contests was the play of their goaltender, Brooks Ostergaard, who stopped 77 of the 79 shots that he faced over the weekend. The sophomore netminder was named the InsideCollegeHockey.com's National Player of the Week for his efforts. Brooks Oscar stood on his head. Uh, he made some big saves when we needed him to, and uh, that's what a good goaltender does, and that's how teams win is when they have good goaltender backing them up. Anytime Brooks is on his game, we're, we're always behind him. We know, uh, we know that every time he goes in the net, we're, we have a, a great chance of winning the game, and he was able to uh, put it all together and, and give us some great performances. To be honest with you, I feel kind of selfish getting the spotlight here. It was a total team effort, and uh, the guys on the ice, the 22 skaters, really put us in a position to win the game. They were uh, banging the body. They were clearing the pucks out. They did all the little things that resulted in the wins. The Colonials will now try to use these back-to-back -back upsets as a stepping stone for the rest of the season, starting this weekend at home against Huntsville, Alabama. But regardless of what happens between now and the end of March, the Colonials hope to be able to look back at this past weekend as a major turning point in the program's history. It's a tradition that we win, we win those big games, and I, I think it's, uh, it's going to pay dividends for this program in the future. Uh, guys will realize that what they have in front of them, and, and when uh, opportunity arises, I think that the team will always be able to step up to the challenge. To have a, a successful weekend against the number one team in the nation, you, it's, it's something that you can remember for the rest of your lives. They can't take this away from us ever, and this is one of the things. Those are life memories right there. Right.